Glad to see you here for episode two of the rigging module in the Anamorphic cookbook. In the previous episode, we talked about the keystone effect and the advantages of locking alignment to a rail mounted system. We'll start today by talking about lens jackets, then switch over to quick release systems and finish up with faster lens swaps. Jackets, formerly known as FMJs or front metal jackets, were introduced by Rapido Technology as a way to unify the look of your rig for a more professional looking setup. They come in various lengths and fit the most popular adapters. They also feature male front threads, which are more often than not absent in vintage adapters and bridge the connection between anamorphic and variable diopter focusing solution. Since a jacket cuts off access to the adapter's focus ring, set it to optimal infinity before locking it in. The same applies to alignment. It is much harder to align an adapter once it's inside of a jacket. Just like we discussed for taking lenses in the last episode, you must push the front of your anamorphic as close as possible to the rear of your variable diopter. This influences coverage greatly. Always aim for a jacket that is an exact fit for your anamorphic and doesn't have much of a lip around the front. If your variable diopter requires a different front thread diameter, confirm that such adapter ring doesn't act as a spacer. As an example, let's say I'm using this SLR Magic rangefinder as my variable diopter at the front of the system. This focuser has 77 mm male threads and adding a step ring from 72 to 77 mm, for example, already increases the gap between the front of my anamorphic and the rear of the variable diopter. Since we're working to unify the look and functionality of the rig, we might as well look at what that means for our taking lens. Rapido offers the RMJ or rear metal jacket, which pairs with Rapido's clamps. The downside is they add a fair amount of weight, have fiddly installation process, and most importantly, are compatible with only a limited selection of taking lenses. They rely on sliding both parts together, anamorphic to taking lens, and screwing them with threads. I already expressed my disliking for screwing parts that need to be frequently adjusted, so that's the last job for me. It might be worth it for you though. If we're being extremely simplistic, I could just slide these two parts together since the anamorphic block is on rails. The issue is that creates room for wobble, our arch enemy in rigging. So let's look at an alternative quick release solution to go between the anamorphic adapter and taking lens. What I have here is a 3D printed solution by Lucas Pfaff, which fits most adapters and goes on to an 80 millimeter outer diameter ring on the taking lens. It pushes the back of the anamorphic as close as possible to the front of the lens and is super quick to undo for a lens swap. To use the solution, I strip the adapter of all other pieces, so we need a support beam at the front, this one also by Lucas Pfaff and 3D printed. It's a more DIY approach to rigging an adapter, but in many ways lighter, faster and cheaper than Rapidos. To download these models and print them yourself, Follow the link below this episode. When using adapters, switching for a wider or narrower field of view with a different taking lens is a process that can take several minutes. Here's how a beginner might do it. Our beginner has at least two brain cells, so they'll start by disconnecting the whole lens train from the camera, then stumble a bit to cover the sensor and the back of the 50 mil. Next, will unscrew the adapter from the taking lens. Let's add a few seconds to fight with step rings, removing them from the 50 mil and screwing them onto the 85 mil so we can finally attach the anamorphic in front of it. Now the contraption goes back onto the camera. We'll set the 85 mil to infinity, fiddle a little bit to find the best setting and let it rest. Next step, aligning the scope. Let's see a flashlight here, loosen the clamp and line up our flares, then re-tighten the clamp. Last, since our 85 mil is bigger than our 50 mil, we adjust the position of the follow focus so it connects with the variable diopter, which slid forward. Whew, 
That was solid two minutes. This on set means one of two things. You're either going to avoid lens changes like the plague, or you're gonna waste a lot of other people's time while they wait for a lens change. This whole thing can take even longer if alignment is a bit tricky or your adapter doesn't flare easily. Now, here's how an experienced user might rig anticipating lens changes. First of all, we'll have the adapter and clamp mounted directly to the rails using a quick release system or a donut to connect the taking lens and the scope. The first step is to undo the quick release, then slide the scope forward on the rails. Notice that even though we're mounted on rails, the supports aren't locked to the rail position. Next, we release the 50mm from the camera and bring in the 85mm, which already has its own quick release ring on the front and it's taped to infinity focus. Prep is an important setup of your project. That's when you tune all of your taking lenses to the best focus performance and lock them. If you're using your taking lenses separately from the anamorphic block, at least have marks for ideal focus. They can be just tape marks and quickly move to that when using the scope. With the 85 in position, slide back the anamorphic block and quick lock it. We still have to adjust the follow focus position. A creative alternative to that means realizing our focusing element, the variable diopter, never actually changes. It just slides back and forth with the adapter. So you could rig your follow focus directly to it on a separate rail. We'll get to that in the next episode. Doing it that way, when you slide the anamorphic block forward, you automatically adjust your follow focus too. This is not the only solution either. Oliver Camber from Cine Saga, for example, prefers to pop the camera itself out of the rig for a quick lens swap. The approach I outlined here is a shortcut. You can customize it further to fit your own preferences. This type of custom rigging is at the core of filming with anamorphic adapters opening the door for infinite approaches and setups. This is where Small Rig thrives by offering an extensive catalog of parts for you to pick what works best for your case. It's a wrap on this episode, but stay tuned for the next two. There, I'll go over all the various accessories that make a rig for any occasion, looking into wireless video, follow focus options, external power from V-Lock or Sony NPF batteries, cable management, and matte boxes pros, cons, and effects. Here's a reminder that members of the channel rock and get early access to these tutorials, plus a series of exclusive perks. Memberships start at three bucks a month and are instrumental in the constant improvement of the videos. Sign up now and get a few more videos right away. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode. Chitta